So what's going on guys? My name's Chopper and I hope everybody's having a great day. Welcome back to a brand new video in which we're going to be looking at the 20 things that you didn't know about Minecraft. So these are going to be 20 different facts that most Minecraft players, the vast majority, don't know about the game and you specifically watching this video are going to learn all of these today. Some of these facts are going to be really good stuff for game knowledge and other ones are going to be ones that you can just kind of impress your friends with. Either way, however you want to use these facts is up to you, but if you guys end up enjoying today's video, then I would really appreciate if you could spare one second to drop a thumbs up. We're going to go for 2,000 likes on this video, and I would really appreciate that. Definitely make sure to go ahead and also subscribe if you are brand new to the channel so you don't miss any more Minecraft videos like this. There's plenty more coming down the pipeline that you guys can expect, and all of you have been absolutely overwhelming with the support on this channel, so thank you guys so much. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Coming in at number 20, guys, a lot of sound effects in not only Minecraft, but video games in general come from some pretty strange places, but one of the most strange ever is the ghast sound effect. When you're around a ghast in Minecraft, it makes noises that sound somewhat familiar to you, but you may not be able to put your finger on exactly what it is, but it turns out the noise that these make come from Daniel Rosenfeld, or C418's cat. The noises the ghast makes either ambiently or while in battle come from his cat when disturbed while sleeping. And when you keep that in mind, it completely retextualizes how you look at ghast entirely. But from here on out, you know, every single time you interact with the gas, the sound you're hearing comes from a Minecraft dev's cat. A pretty interesting fact, but certainly not a lot of people know that one. Coming in at number 19, if you get poisoned in Minecraft for any reason whatsoever, either by rotten food or a potion or something like that, you can instantly negate the poison effects by drinking milk. And the great thing about this is, it becomes a really good early game tool, especially when you're setting up because spiders can be quite annoying poisoning you, or if you happen to just run into it for any other reason at all, milk is quite easy to obtain and it's an instant negator of that poison effect. This is practically one of the only ways you can get rid of poison as you cannot sleep it off and this is the fastest and easiest way to do so. Taking the number 18 spot, you can dye leather armor to whatever color you like and you can do this kind of in a somewhat complicated way by getting a cauldron, filling it up with water and then placing dye in that water and then coloring the rest of your leather armor. The reason why a lot of people don't know this is I think just a lot of people skip out on leather armor to begin with because iron is isn't that hard to obtain and of course it's way better as a feature however you cannot dye iron armor leather is the only one that can use this feature but if for whatever reason you don't have iron at hand and you only have leather but you want to make it a different color if you have dyes on you you can do that making it whatever color you like by putting that in the cauldron and then coloring it as well coming in at number 17 squids that are splashed with fire resistance potion will actually survive for a couple of seconds when put onto a bed of lava now they used to be a thing where they would survive pretty much forever until the effect wore off, but now it seems to be that they have a, at least a couple of seconds of immunity when given fire resistance, but eventually it will catch up to them. Honestly, this one's pretty good to know because in my opinion, it's a great way to trick your friends and at least get them confused for a little bit. But conversely, if you give yourself the fire resistance effect, then you're just completely immune to lava. Like literally you can just bathe in this stuff and you're going to be absolutely fine. This is another great way to trick your friends. If they don't really know exactly what's going on with potions and how to use them properly, but you do. Different creatures seem to have different fire resistance properties, but when it comes to you yourself, the player, this just makes you fully invincible. So it's a really, really great potion to have, especially if you're in the nether a lot or something like that. Taking number 16, eating spider eyes in Minecraft really isn't something I'd recommend to you, but because what's going to happen is if you consume this, it's likely going to poison you just for a couple of seconds. It's not going to completely drain your health, but it's it's certainly not something you want to do unless you ha absolutely have to eat it, but sometimes what a lot of people don't know is that raw chicken can end up doing the same thing, albeit a little bit more unlikely. Sometimes you'll get lucky, even with rotten zombie flesh, you can get away without being poisoned, but unfortunately there is a significant chance with spider eyes, zombie flesh, and also raw chicken that you will get a poison effect from eating it. That's why I always recommend if possible, cooking your food as much as possible. It's just going to net you so much more benefit. Number 15, Enderman language is literally just English, but backwards. And this sounds pretty weird because theoretically what would happen is if you're recording Minecraft gameplay, or if you're just listening to the sounds of Enderman and you played it backwards, you'd get some pretty ridiculous messages. The reason why it doesn't quite sound like English backwards all the time, or at least it's not very obvious is because there is a little bit of like sound distortion and other effects going on to kind of mask the fact that it is just English spoken backwards, but that's what it is at the end of the day. 
As I was saying before, a lot of the languages and sound effects in Minecraft have really interesting origins and backstories, and the Endermen are absolutely no exception. Coming in at the number 15 spot, guys, eggs have a 0.4% approximate chance of spawning four chickens at once. Now, in theory, when you're playing survival, you need to have a lot of eggs in order to make this viable. Honestly, eggs aren't a super scarce resource or anything like that, but what's going to happen is if you try to get this four chicken spawn out of one egg, well, theoretically, you're going to have to end up burning through a lot of these because most of the time they're just going to be duds and nothing's going to come out of them but if you get lucky you just get that one special egg you can get four chickens in literally one hatch which is absolutely wild now you can end up getting two to three chickens out of one egg relatively commonly and it's not super hard to do however just getting that four hatch is extremely difficult and you have to burn through a lot of these to even hatch it it's a cool fact but honestly guys you can do so much more with eggs rather than just breaking them coming in at the number 13 spot guys you can sleep in Minecraft during thunderstorms despite it being daytime so even if you're in the day like we are in my gameplay but it's thunderstorming so it looks kind of a little bit darker out you can still end up using your bed and going to sleep and what's generally going to happen is that you'll go to bed and then you'll wake up and then the thunderstorm should clear out a little bit some time is going to pass while you're sleeping of course making it closer to nighttime if you do happen to be sleeping during the day however they can happen either at nighttime or the day so it doesn't really matter but during thunderstorms just keep in mind that you can sleep it's a really Really useful tip for you to know in your game. Coming in at number 12, you guys know that soul sand really cuts down on your movement speed by about half, I would say. It just significantly slows you down and you don't want to be in it for too long. But what you may not know is that if you put a layer of ice under that soul sand, it even cuts that down to around another 50%, making you almost at a snail's pace. This is a really good trick to know if you want to defend your base. You can put a layer of soul sand around it and then put a block of ice and conceal it in a way where if somebody tries to roll up on your base, they're not going to be getting anywhere fast anytime soon. Keep in mind it is important to hide that layer of ice in my opinion because otherwise most players are going to figure that out pretty quickly what they're standing on. So if you hide it well then you'll get away with it. Coming in at the number 11 spot, snowballs are actually a very viable tool to use against Endermen as well. A lot of new players are very intimidated by this creature because they're a little bit difficult to fight up close and especially the whole idea at looking at them and to trigger them and then have them attack you is a little bit overwhelming for some newer players. But snowballs are very good at keeping them away and even at far distances you can definitely tag these up and at least if you don't have to take them down it's at least good enough to get them off your back for a bit. Snowballs didn't use to work on Endermen a little bit earlier in in Minecraft. So now that they've kind of fixed this and added this in, it's a very viable strategy that I recommend all newer players take advantage of. Coming in at number 10, pressure plates have an interesting mechanic that can hold up both water and lava. As you can see, there seems to be like an invisible barrier once you place down these two liquids on top of it. And as far as like practical effects go for these, with lava, there really isn't one. I mean, you can just place it anywhere and it's going to pretty much get the exact same job done. But with water, I think it's kind of good to do when you're making a fountain and you don't want to have like something over top to put the water on it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing this way I think and it also helps you to get a better understanding on how the pressure plate mechanic works in the first place definitely a very unique one but not something that I think every player is going to end up using in their game coming in today at the number nine spot red flowers are actually a little bit more rare than every other color in the game now when it comes to just overall probability it's not entirely difficult to find red flowers and they do look really really nice aesthetically but just when you kind of look at the flower patch as a whole especially on a very grand scale you're significantly more likely to find flowers in either a white a yellow or a blue color than you are in red that doesn't mean that they're super hard to find or that they don't exist it's just that probability says that you're going to find these other colors first and much more frequently than you are red however i think the red flowers in my opinion look the best in minecraft and in my opinion it is kind of cool having them rare because when you see them either you can put them a lot around your house or just wherever you live and they really stand out as they're super easy to spot Coming in at the number 8 spot, originally Minecraft had plans for a full-on sky dimension, but this ended up getting scrapped and reworked somewhat into what we know now as the end. Now, in my opinion, the end is the only dimension in Minecraft that really needs an overhaul. At the point right now in the game, it is kind of bland after we're getting another update, and then it's pretty much just as good as the Earth Realm. The end, there's not really a whole lot going on here besides, obviously, the dragon, but that's about it. I feel like th there's could be a lot more done with this program and maybe something more originally 
definitely what they were thinking. But if they end up overhauling the end at some point and making it very similar to the Sky Dimension that they kind of wanted to do in the first place, that would be absolutely incredible. Maybe we'll see it one day, maybe we won't. Only time will tell. Coming in at number seven, it's really good to keep either an ocelot or a domesticated regular cat around your house because creepers are just deathly afraid of them. And this is very useful because you can have cats around as kind of like a sentry and they're absolutely the antithesis to creepers. The thing is, cats don't really go out of their way to attack creepers. They're just scared of them and they're gonna flee no matter what. And this is really useful specifically if you're playing hardcore and you only have one life and you cannot risk dying by just some random stray creeper. Having an ocelot just at least in the vicinity is a great repellent for these things and you'll never ever have to worry about a creeper again. Keep in mind, dogs do not have this effect that they will attack a creeper if you go and fight them, but they won't be a repellent as, as well as cats are, so just make sure you know that. Coming in at number six, Endermen in the earlier days of Minecraft were actually called Farlanders. Now, this was really early on in the concept. Endermen have basically been in the game since the very conception of Minecraft itself, but they were called something entirely different, and a lot of their effects and kind of their look and stuff were completely different as well. Now, in my opinion, Endermen is a way better name because Farlanders just kind of seems like something that would belong to a current pillager in Minecraft. Farlanders doesn't really have that, that mystical, mysterious feel that Enderman does. I, I like that name significantly better and I think most people do as well. Like we wouldn't even recognize them the same way if they were Farlanders. But nonetheless, it is always interesting to see how a lot of these enemies and mobs are reworked, not only in their name, but also in their functionalities. Coming in at number five, all of your mainstay animals, you know, your pigs, cows, and chickens, all that kind of stuff, the baby versions of those will not grant you any resources at all. Only a fully grown animal is going to net you any kind of benefit from killing it. Now, the reason why this is done, not only does it make sense from a logical standpoint where, you know, obviously farming baby animals won't give you that much resource to begin with, but also it discourages players from doing so. So just keep in mind when running a farm in Minecraft, all baby animals that are in that farm are not going to provide you any benefit whatsoever, and you're better off either putting them somewhere else for the time being or just moving them to a different farm. And speaking of babies in Minecraft, zombies can give birth to baby zombies, but this happens unbelievably rarely to a point where I've really never seen this happen in real time in Minecraft, and if you have, it's an extremely rare occurrence to come across, but every once in a while, you will find baby zombies, and eventually, that's where they came from. They're definitely not as plentiful as a lot of the other baby animals in the game, like the ones we just previously spoke about, but they do exist, uh, and they are quite a rare mob. Some other mobs do have baby versions of themselves as well that you can see running around from time to time, but zombies are definitely of the more rare kind, and if you happen to see one spawn in front of your eyes, just note that is that is an extremely rare occurrence. Coming in at number Number three, the old legend of Hero Brian is a little bit more real than you might want to believe. Now, what I mean by that is the developers at Minecraft caught on pretty quickly to this old legend of Hero Brian, and they even went as far as to kind of troll and mess with players by putting Hero Brian code strings into the game. They had mentioned in a patch note before that Hero Brian was removed. They well know that people are going to be digging into the files with every update that comes up for Minecraft. People are always mining through that stuff, no pun intended, but they have found Hero Brian in the files but that doesn't mean he ever like fully existed at any point. This was likely just a joke from the devs. Coming in at the number two spot, there is a really cool technique in Minecraft where you can collect the dragon egg by pushing it with a piston. And so this can be the way where you can keep it in your inventory. And the way you do this is place the piston on the side of it and then cover up all of the backside. You place a lever down, it essentially squeezes the egg to where there's no physical space left and you have to be able to collect the item. And so this is a technique that's been used a lot to do this. Definitely something you should try out in your game if you want to collect a dragon egg, but that is the way to do it. Now finally guys, coming in today at the number one spot, Minecraft was originally supposed to be called Cave Game, and so this went through a couple of different iterations and some reworks of that original Cave Game name before finally settling in on Minecraft, and so in my personal opinion, Cave Game isn't the worst thing in the world to call a game like this. While I think Minecraft has a better ring to it and we've been used to it for so long, theoretically we could be in a universe where instead of looking up Minecraft for this video, you'd be searching up Cave Game. It, it's definitely a a lot more unique the word Minecraft instead of just these two very simple words put together so overall I think the change is great but uh, let me know which name you prefer down below in the comment section there's some people that actually prefer cave game and fair enough I think it's I think they're both fine names but Minecraft is a little bit more unique if you ask me but anyways guys that is going to be the top 20 things that you didn't know about Minecraft I really hope you guys did enjoy today if you did please make sure you absolutely smash that like button right now I would really appreciate it go over to subscribe if you are brand new to the channel of course so you don't miss any more Minecraft videos like this we have 
plenty more to go, so you have a lot more content to expect. And uh, without further ado, guys, thank you all for watching once again. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy, and peace out.